All right, Crystal, what's on your radar? Well, according to some new reporting in the Washington Post, several members of Bernie Sanders' campaign team, including campaign manager Faz Shakir, Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal, and longtime advisor Jeff Weaver, are urging him to exit the presidential race. Here is some of that reporting. Longtime strategist Jeff Weaver has privately made a case that exiting the race more quickly and on good terms with Biden would give Sanders more leverage in the long run, according to one of the people in the room. The other said Weaver has used a light touch in presenting his case. Now, as many of you know, following Bernie's losses in Florida, Illinois, and Arizona, as the true gravity of the coronavirus crisis finally set in here in D.C., I argued that there was, in fact, one inducement significant enough to make it worth Bernie doing Dems bidding and dropping out of the race. I argued that Bernie should drop if he could secure a top-level leadership position on the coronavirus response. The actions that are taken now will massively reshape America in a way that dwarfs the impact even of the 2008 financial crisis. Does the government once again favor industry over workers? Will our politicians stand by and watch as work wither on the vine? Do we in this moment prove to our population that government can in fact be a force for good in their lives? Now, a lot of people were upset by the suggestion at the time, which I do get, but I stand by it. The consequences of the corporate bailout that was rushed through will be with us for years and likely decades to come. The paltry, one-time, way-too-slow-to-come grants and over-reliance on a backlogged unemployment system will cause unnecessary pain and lengthen the depression. At that moment, Bernie had something approaching his maximum leverage, with Joe anxious to claim the nomination as the nation slid into its current coronavirus freeze. And while you then forego the chance to have something wild happen and make a comeback at a time when, frankly, wild things are happening literally every day, the opportunity to fundamentally shift the economic structure of this bailout and the ensuing recovery was worth it. That time, though, has now passed. And arguments that are being made now for Bernie to drop down, according to the Washington Post anyway, make no sense to me whatsoever. Why in the world would he drop out right now? Literally why? After all, no one is going to do anything for Bernie and his movement because he's nice. It's absurd to indulge in a fantasy that by doing what the establishment asked him to do and bowing out while half the states still remain, something they would never do if the shoe were on the other foot, that somehow there will be leverage or spoils to be gained. Bending the knee and limping out is the literal opposite of leverage. As someone who has gotten rolled way too many times in my life, frankly, for being the nice girl and playing by the rules, please take my word for it. Maybe an ugly thing to say, but power can often be ugly. Nothing will be given without some pain. And every day that Bernie stays in the race over the increasing howls of protests from the media and the Democratic establishment, that pain will start to build. Right now, his presence is basically a simple annoyance for the establishment. But as the weeks roll by and Biden continues to flail as Bernie is able to confidently offer broad-reaching plans, makes what is by now a completely obvious case for Medicare for All, and is shockingly able to coherently articulate a plan without reading from notes, that annoyance is going to turn to angst and then to terror. Terror that Bernie's continued presence in the race is actually damaging the empty husk that they've decided to prop up and nominate. Now, the truth is, Joe, in comparison to nearly any other leader, is a damning contrast. Put him up against Andrew Cuomo or Andy Bashir in Kentucky or, frankly, Trump even in terms of just pure command authority. But they want to blame Bernie for Joe's failures. And every week that goes by, that anxiety and that leverage will build and build. Of course, the real way for Bernie to inflict pain would be to hold down his voters, to explicitly tell Joe and the rest that he may or may not go all in for him in the general. Technical but tepid support would look a lot different than unconditional cheerleading. We all know Bernie doesn't have the stomach for that kind of hardball, so I'm not holding my breath there. But just think, all these people already hate him anyway, so if Bernie's thinking of getting out to make MSNBC or Chuck Schumer or whoever have warm fuzzies about him, that ship has long sailed. Just see how wonderful his friend Elizabeth Warren was to him after all of his respect and kindness. Lord knows they're going to blame him for Joe's loss anyway. Look at what happened last time around. All the rallies, all the kind words for Hillary, all the nicey-nice with the DNC. And then they turned right around and blamed him anyway. Just look at Whoopi last week as we covered here, insisting that he stayed in too long and that it hurt Hillary. Now, if your candidate is so weak that they literally can't take a competitor in the race who's not even being critical... Maybe it's time to get a new candidate, but I digress. The establishment may want Bernie to play nice and drop out, and I understand why his weary advisors who are ready to escape campaign limbo and move on with their own lives, and also who are genuinely concerned about the senator's image, may push that route as well. 
The truth is, there's nothing nice about failing to use every tool at your disposal to secure whatever you possibly can for the young people and the working class people who scraped together their 10 and 20 bucks, who made phone calls all over the country, who organized caravans to go knock on doors. Joe Biden's feelings and the establishment's heartburn be damned. Um, what did you think of this reporting? Because mm -hmm. to me, the idea that by getting out now, you would have more leverage is just completely preposterous. Yeah, I, I don't, th I, any sort of getting out at any point without extracting leverage is, I mean, they're what leverage exists right now. But, and that's part of the issue though, is even with what you're saying, is he already basically destroyed his own leverage because he said, Joe Biden can beat Trump. He said, I will vote for the eventual Democratic nominee. I will work hard as possible. He's always like, Trump is the most dangerous president of my lifetime. He's a single threat to this. And again, it's just all of those statements can't be reconciled. He needs to do, I mean, the most obvious thing is what Harvey J.K. had said on this show. Right. Which is, you need to go and need to fight and be like, not a single one of my people. I will tell every single one of them to stay home unless you adopt my positions. But he's not going to do that. And at this point, I don't actually know what leverage he possibly could extract. Joe has said he would veto Medicare for all. Joe, I mean, at this point, what could he possibly have an impact on? Maybe cabinet positions. Well, so there's a reality and there's an establishment perception. Yeah. The reality is that Bernie staying in the race doesn't hurt Joe. Joe's no. hurting himself. Bernie being there and doing his coronavirus roundtables and raising money for the crowd, like that doesn't hurt Joe whatsoever. But that's not, not even buying ads or anything. Right, exactly. I mean, yeah. he's not critiquing him at all, right? But the perception from the establishment is that this is very, very damaging because they really believe their own hype, that he was hurt, harmful to Hillary, that he didn't help her enough, that he stayed in too long, all of that. And so just as Whoopi articulated last week, you know, we're going through deja vu. We see this playing out again, and you're going to cause Joe to lose again. And so even though the reality is that Bernie is not doing any actual harm to Joe, um, their perception is that the longer he stays in, the more damaging it is. And that perception is all that matters. That's the only way that he builds any kind of leverage. Now, what you use that leverage for, that's more of an open question to me. That's why I pushed before, before they crafted the bailout bill, if he could have had a leadership position, that was a thing worth trading. Okay. That was a tangible thing that was seriously worth trading. Some vague commitment to put Medicare for all on the platform, whatever. To me, that's all worthless. That meant something in 2016 when it was like, let's let's lay a marker down of how much we have moved the Democratic Party. Mm -hmm. Okay, that has already happened, right? We all know, we saw how the whole debate was framed around Bernie's issues and his positions and how mainstream they've become with the American public. That's already done. So what can you get? Vague promises from Joe, vague platform items, none of that matters, but this crisis is far from over. So there could be another point as they're crafting the next stimulus bill, if that even happens, maybe that's the thing you ask for. I think you have to hold out to see what makes sense in the moment. I'm not sure that's clear right now. Yeah, I'm not sure either. And the more I think about it, I just don't think the Biden campaign is magnanimous, strategic enough or whatever, and, and maybe even Bernie wouldn't want this, to extend the olive branch that could be, right? So he couldn't say, I don't know what cabinet position Bernie would want. I mean, maybe Secretary of the Treasury, something like that. But I don't think the Biden campaign would actually extend that. And I'm not sure if Bernie would even be able to extract that at this point because the campaign, the Biden campaign, the way they look at him is this total irrelevancy. And not only is irrelevancy, as annoyance. They're like, oh, he's, you know, he's still staying in the race. He's just whipping his people up who aren't gonna vote for us because again, they think that their vote is owed for them. And they view him with so much antipathy that I don't know if he would be able to extract anything at this point. And I think, again, I just think this is all the pre-work that needs to go into setting the stage for this type of thing has already just been destroyed because of so much of what he did throughout the campaign whenever he thought he might be able to win. Yeah, you might be right, yeah. but I can tell you 100% for sure, if he gets out now, he oh, gets yeah, nothing, he right? right? So there's right. a chance that if he stays in longer and that heartburn builds, that he may have leverage to extract something from them. But if you get out now, there's no reason to get out now. I mean, you're not actually hurting Joe if that's something that you're worried about. You're not gaining anything on the other end. No. The idea that, uh, to me, it's insane that you could look at this town and think, oh, well, if I do the right thing, if I do what they ask me to do, then they're going to pay it back in the future. Please. All they're going to do is say thank you very much and then turn around and blame you once again. Correct. So do not fall for that game. No. I mean, and I'm thinking, like, say Joe Biden picks Kamala Harris. It's like, what can he even, like— even if they said, yeah, yeah, Bernie, we'll give you this one thing. You think they're going to do it? Like, no way. They'll never do it. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, they yeah. will not. They okay. will not. All right, Sagar, looking forward to your radar. That's next.